Hi right, guys, this is part two of my infrared receiver project for the Commodore Amiga CD32. In the first video I had the project working with this infrared receiver from a Sony Discman uh, and I've decided to pull it apart because I replaced it with a stock unit so I was just making sure there was nothing special in it. This is a stock unit from JCAR 3 pin um, infrared receiver module with uh, an inbuilt demodulator. So while the project initially looked like this, it now looks like this with the microcontroller and infrared receiver module on top and the CD32 controller logic on the bottom board. I also mentioned in the first video that I've been collecting Sony Discmans and I came by the infrared remote control and receiver with a broken Discman. Since that video I've bitten the bullet and got myself a nice Discman D303 and then found out it was suitable to uh, use with the remote receiver. That's a shame. The Amiga CD TV remote has arrived in the mail and I got that from Amiga Kit through eBay. Here's the Amiga CD TV, uh, the unit the remote came with, and it's the only one that I know of with its own circuitry to handle uh, the display and the infrared receiver. I'm dealing with the Amiga CD32 though, um, and that's why I need the extra hardware. And here it is, it connects to the keyboard port for power, uh, serial, and also the joystick port. And the communications protocol, the CDTV remote, has some similarities with the Sony that I was using before, the RMDM5. This was the first time I got it working. It didn't take long at all to uh, decode single button presses from it. After sending a, a brief header, the Sony remote sends variable length pulses to represent zeros and ones. Whereas uh, on the other hand, the CDTV remote sends the same length pulses and varies the spaces to represent zeros and ones. Note that the scale for this drawing is arbitrary, both remotes have their own different timing. And for these segments, still in the serial debugging stage, I'm using the NCOM terminal for the Amiga uh, for the serial debugging, and I've got some continuous button pushing working. Uh, the serial debugging and the sound both slow down the responsiveness for the next button push, um, so at least the serial debugging will be removed. The sound from the piezo tweeter, I should be able to uh, interleave that with code, um, so that should be able to stay. Now I'm keeping the compact disc audio playback very soft here and very brief. Uh, just some brief samples uh, save me getting into trouble. These segments show that holding down a track search button does not yet search a track because it doesn't continuously hold down the Amiga joystick button. Instead it just continuously um, ticks the joystick button and skips tracks so that'll have to be fixed a little later. At this point, the absolute joystick buttons associated with CD audio playback are all working though. Some interesting differences between the Sony remote and the CDTV remote that I might as well just regurgitate my reply that I gave the Amiga Facebook group. After a header, both remotes send 12-bit commands, but the Sony remote sends uh, the 12-bit command continuously while you hold the button down, where the CDTV remote sends the command once, followed by a bunch of pulses to tell the receiver that the button's still being pressed. That makes it easy uh, to, no, quick to detect a button release. Now, while I'm only interested mainly now in CD audio player controls, uh, the speed will be important if this thing's ever used as a joystick in gameplay uh, and this is a little bit more work to the software speeding it all up. When I say the serial debug output has to go, that's not really the case. It's just the way that they're written now has to go. Um, the micro I'm using does have a hardware serial port so it can be interleaved with um, the, the usual program loop as well and give the effect of doing everything at the same time like a program should. The stock CD32 game controller you're supposed to use to control the CD player doesn't have separate track, skip and search buttons. Backing up a bit to the Sony controller, it does. So I did a little trick in the microcontroller so that if you hold down the track skip button, it does actually continually skip tracks. And meanwhile the track search button searches tracks. And back into the CD audio player. Um, this segment shows that the track search and skip is working from the same button so a short button press will skip a track and a long one will search into a track. 
So this project could go further depending what I want to do with it. The CDTV remote is supposed to emulate a mouse and a joystick. Um, the joystick's pretty hopeless. I've yet to find out what happens if you, say, press diagonal. Uh, the, the design of the remote seems to discourage you from using a diagonal joystick direction. And what happens if you press two buttons at once, like forward and fire, in a game? And switching this mouse slash joy switch sends out different codes, so can I make another receiver and control two different Amigas with it? These questions and more may or may not be answered in a future video. That's all for now. See us.